What's going on, everyone? It's Kyle here. That you know, I got so in stereo podcast is back. We've got one person here who listens to Silk. We've got a, another person here who now drinks milk. What well, what kind of milk do you drink? Skim milk, Tom? Yep. I actually went to get coffee today in McDonald's, and they didn't have skim milk. Can you believe that? So did you just um, walk I out? I can't after? believe it. Play at <laughs> McDonald's. Like, what do you? <laughs> um, but. Um, Along with these two, I know there's a Kanye West is over party going on on Twitter right now for some reason. But more importantly than that, we have a special guest. Uh, Tom, who's the special guest? Uh, yeah, I'm happy to introduce our special guest this time around, one of our biggest supporters, uh, a very knowledgeable R&B fan and, and music lover, uh, constantly commenting on our on our interviews and podcasts. So we're happy to have Lachelle with us this time around. Welcome. Thank you. Welcome. My publicist thought it would be a good idea for me to come on, so, you know, I'm here. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, a lot, a lot for us to talk about right now. Um, let's start off by the, let's start off by talking about the new album that came out by an artist that we don't normally talk about, but he's now dubbed as the R&B savior, Bruno Mars. Ed, you reviewed the album. Is he the savior of R&B? Saying he's the savior of R&B might be jumping the gun a little bit, but I can say that he saved my playlist from sucking this year because he dropped one of the better albums of the year, if not the best album of the year. I'm going to have to marinate on that a little bit before I make my decision in a couple weeks on what exactly is the album of the year. But he was able to do what so many artists that we've been hoping and wishing to do for months. I mean, he was able to do it. He recaptured New Jack Swing for us old heads, but more importantly, he used the elements of R&B with pop to make something fresh and new and vibrant. The brother got vocals, the brother got energy. It's just a fun record all the way around. He nailed it. You ready for my opinion? If we must, dog. Yep. (laughs) I think I heard it summed up nicely online, uh, Disney funk. What do you say? (laughs) I mean, what is this uh, pop? You know, a pop version of trying to imitate the the best sounds of the early '90s, and I don't know. It's Bruno Mars. I mean, I've never listened to a Bruno Mars album. I probably won't from here on anyway. So okay, pass. Michelle, <laughs> oh, cool. like let her it. go in before I, like I go in. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, Michelle. I mean, I liked it. I thought he was singing, finally, because the earlier stuff, I was like, it's cool, but it's a little too poppy for me. I don't know if I can handle all that, but this album, I liked it. I felt like he was actually singing, like I said, and I liked how he went, he did, like, the New Jack Swing stuff. What was the song called? Um, Straight Up and Down? Mm -hmm. I think it's Finesse, right? Finesse, yeah. Yeah, I like that one, and I like um, Straight Up and Down, A Little Shy, Melody he took from them. And then I like, um, what is it, Chunky? Yep. And I like 24, whatever. And I like, I think, two more. I didn't like the last song. I know for sure I, the song was kind of boring, but that song. Oh, man. That's that's the best song on the album. Shout out to Babyface for it. Oh, man. Um, All right. I'll take my opinion <laughs> back. It, it was a very cute effort. It was a cute effort. Can I just say something, though? Go ahead and say something before I say something. (laughs) Okay, well, I'm just going to say this. I don't want to come off as a hater, but first of all, the album was solid. It was quality. I have no complaints over that. But Ed, Tom, and Michelle, to an extent, we're better than that. We're music experts. We're not just looking at the now. We're looking at the impact. We're looking at all of that stuff. And let me just say, this is a good album for now, but is anyone really going to be listening to this five years from now, or are nope. they just going to go back to Belle Biv DeVoe? Nope. After this month, that's it. No. Ow. No, that's how people are. As soon as you hear this, you'll go right back to the old stuff. I mean, with well, him, well, I don't know about the old stuff, but with other artists, you listen to the new stuff for like a month, two, and then that's it. And that's even being lenient. I think it's too early to say. Like, it's definitely not something that I expect to be bumping in 2020. But 
I mean, it's what have you heard this year? We can't name that. What have you heard this year that you're gonna rock longer than like two weeks from now? Y'all see a rock and Joe in that green suit? Ed, can I just tell you why I'm mad, Ed? Can I tell you why? I'm tell mad? me why you're mad, son. So we've got R and B fans who are picking up Bruno Mars, who Kyle told me two days ago is is for teenagers to listen to. And we got R&B fans in their 30s and 40s and 50s listening to Bruno Mars, and they're not even checking for Joe's album. Or And he said he was going to retire, and we need to support people like that. And now they're on to Bruno Mars. Not we're, desperate. Really we're desperate. We're desperate. What can we do, you know? I think these artists well, keep releasing these albums, and they do trap music. We just want something. Joe didn't do trap music. I'm not saying Joe had the best album, but he certainly didn't do trap music. Here's the thing. Didn't, didn't like maybe two or three songs that were trappy? Uh, I wouldn't say yeah. it was really trappy, but it was definitely topical and straight up to use modern sounds. But here's the thing. I think that just, and I talked about this with Adele like last year or so. Let them live. If they want to make music that's R&B inspired, I'm not going to tell them they can't do it as long as it's good. But that doesn't mean I only have an issue when people say, "Well, Joe hasn't released an album since 1997. I guess I'll go listen <laughs> to Bruno Mars because obviously you aren't a fan because you aren't paying attention to what's going on." I'm a Joe fan. That Joe album was just I right at best, so I'm not going to keep rocking. Bruno, I can't. Front. I listened to it. I bought it because he looked good in the suit. That's the reason why I bought it. Oh, oh, well, man. I did. I bought it. Yeah. I listened to it once, and that was it. Period. He was. Oh, happy you did buy it. Nine ninety nine. I did. I actually bought it. I don't know why, but I was desperate. I just. Bored. Oh come on, come on. Did, oh, did you like it completely through and through? It doesn't matter. We have to support Joe. He's a legend uh-huh, of R and B. Did you like it completely through? No, no, no. Um, no, no. I mean, let's, I don't let's care be real though. Give me quality music. And I'm not saying it was garbage. It was not garbage. Oh, so y'all going to dance under the I'm question. I'm not going to okay, pop an it. album okay. just because. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Come on, man. All right, let's so, keep it together, guys. I'm just no, asking. That's thing. all inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> here's the thing. Um, what was the last time that an album came out for R&B that you said you could listen to the whole thing straight through? I mean, R&B, this isn't the same. Even the artists we love from the 90s. Kelly Price's last one? Uh, it's a little too churchy for me. Oh, Michelle, <laughs> you missed inside Joe Michelle. Oh, what about Kim? Kim did a good one. His last album was pretty good. I mean, I mean, we love Kim. He makes great music, <laughs> no, but I'm in you. my early. I, I got I'm, I'm, you. I got you. I'm in my early thirties here. I'm not forty-five. I'm thirty-one. Up, I just turned thirty-one. I like all music, I mean, but give me a couple of decades and we'll get there. Ooh, <laughs> give oh, me a couple. Uh, <laughs> wow. Listen, do you read do you read my reviews or do you just skip through them? Maxwell, hot out. King, hot out. Whoa, 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 whoa. Who had a hot album? Uh oh. Maxwell, the Uh-oh. singer Maxwell? Uh oh. The singer Maxwell. He had a hot what album? album? Yes. What album did you hear? I didn't hear anything, but okay, go ahead. Um oh, man. was hot this year. Um okay. Joe James had a joint. We had a joint. There was some yeah, but the point is not every single song was was great. Is um is the point? Well, if you're gonna go, Bro there, James had a good album. Okay. If you're gonna go there, like I can't think of the last album R and B or hip hop that I listened to straight through that I could keep rocking around. When was the last time I gave a five star review? Like it's that's been real. That's yeah. That's so yes, I think across the board the game needs to step it up, but that doesn't mean that that's not quality music. So Roe James was quality music. Well, jeez, daggers here. Just asking. No, we love Roe James. Are you kidding me? Ro okay. James. I watched Roe James come up in the New York City music scene for the past five years. He was. Yeah, he you was gotta be home. proud of the homie. He really. He's grind. a friend of ours. Gotta be proud of him. Oh, okay. I got you. I got you. But don't forget though, he signed to a major label. He he doesn't have full creative creative control. So I know he's a talented artist. I'm just saying. Vocally? Absolutely. Have you seen him live? Have you seen him live? Nope. Oh. I have. I've seen him on YouTube. <laughs> that counts. That, 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 that does count. That does count. No, that does count. Okay. But, uh. Okay. Can, can I just uh, bring it all back together? 
because we've kind of lost do, we've kind of lost track. We're talking about road games. So, first of all, I think Ed, you earlier said uh, I can't think of any songs that we'll be listening to in 2020. Yep. I have one for you, Ed. I have an R&B song for you. Broccoli. You know that broccoli song? Oh, my God. <sighs> Look, player. Wait a second. Just, now, Kyle is trying to put me on the spot because, unfortunately, Drum is a Virginia dude. I can't claim everybody from Virginia. We yes. make mistakes. Yes. And it's I'm all. not rocking with broccoli. Another Southerner. Yeah. <laughs> Taking down the industry. You don't need to hear it. <laughs> is it trap? Oh, oh yeah. it's trap. It's a yeah. trap to listen to that song. Don't oh. do it. The vocals are oh, pretty yeah. good, though. So he's a, this, the person's a singer? No, he's a, a he's barely human. <laughs> he's <Okay>. future. <laughs> uh, secondly, uh, back to Bruno Mars. I felt like that album had too much nostalgia on it for my liking. Um an album that I would compare it to, well, not to compare it to, but just to make it relevant for this conversation, Justin Timberlake's debut album, Justified, it had elements of Off the Wall, but the production was updated on it. it you know, the Neptunes and Timbaland did their thing on it, whereas this Bruno Mars album literally sounds like it's from 1992. Does that not take away from the album? Not necessarily. If you look at it as like a look at a movie like a period piece. Like if you see a movie that is set in the past, it doesn't mean that it's like old and dusty. It means it's telling a story from that era. And I think that what Bruno was trying to do was tell a story from that era and bring it up. And it's not like all the beats are straight up like that. There are some you know, you got you got your boy Babyface doing some stuff, you got some production that's clearly throwback. But there are elements of it that are current. In a nutshell, these artists just can't win for losing. They can't. They can't, though. They can't. I don't understand. <laughs> I mean, if they, if they do throw back stuff, then we complain about it. If they do current stuff, we complain. So they, they can't win. Well, yeah. It's about, I, this, it, didn't it come out on Friday? It just came out, It right? did. Yeah. yeah. Let it marinate. People ain't even heard it yet. They got to People are it... Don't get me started we don't, on this discussion. We we don't have time for that. We we only listen to albums for like a day and then we this, have to move on to the next. Don't you understand? We're in the iTunes <laughs> generation. People these days, no, listen, people these days will listen to the 30 second snippets on iTunes and give a full album review. That's the way it is. They, R&B is meant to be yes, listened to. They that do. Way. I have seen album reviews called like something like first tape snippet reviews or something. They're like, there is a whole subset of reviews like that. It makes my it's stomach intense. turn as a reviewer because it's so lazy. Like, put it you got to let it get in your mind album. and let it marinate. You can't just review yes. it in 30 seconds. Every album I listen to and review, I listen to it at least three times before I write the review. Like, you can't just listen to a snippet and then throw something on YouTube. Mm. People on well, the Well, I have an interesting question for you. Actually, this is Lachelle's question. You know, her and I were talking earlier. Why is it that these days an R&B artist puts out an album, we'll listen to it for a week, two weeks, maybe a month, and then we just go back to 1995 when they put out their first or second album? Why is that? Why do we do that? Uh, I, I, yeah, I, I just think I have an answer for that because it's like when is it? – Because it's not like the well, new music is necessarily bad. But we just I, revert back to. The I don't prime. do that though. Personally, I don't. I don't that. either. I like everything I'm rocking came out this year. Ed, like, I'm the, I mean, I understand some people do that, but I Ed, don't. Yeah. Uh-oh. You still listening to Maxwell's album, the new one? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm trying That's to happened. figure out the Maxwell shade here. Like it's going this hot. Ain't nobody throwing them shade. I'm just asking you a question. That's all. Well, oh. <laughs> and I uh, personally, like, we come out with our top 100 songs of the year every year. And to me, I, I'm listening to those songs constantly, the songs I think are the best every year, and even the ones from the previous years. Personally, I put my, my best songs on shuffle. I rate my iTunes songs four or five stars, whatever, shuffle those songs, or whatever comes on. If I do a certain, certain vibe. I'll go with that song and I'll skip it. It doesn't matter the year. Yeah, same here. Okay. So, <laughs> sorry. 
<laughs> um, anyways. But, but, but that does bring me to another point. I feel like okay. after an artist releases their debut, the quality of the music constantly is downhill with some rare exceptions. Like you can't say Joe's new album is as good as My Name is Joe, even though he will say he, he thinks it is. And sorry, Joe, we love you, but I think anyone might, would say that's his best album by far. Well, or, first of all, Joe, 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 right? Joe thought My Name is Joe came out in 1995, but it actually came out in 2000. <laughs> Wait, that was the one that they had the stutter remix, right? Yeah. Oh, see, I like the one before that one. You're yeah, that was the one I would song? say is the best one. Yeah, I like that one. You're, you're classifying it by that song of all things. What about I Want to Know? <laughs> yeah, I like that. I'm just that just that's the one that came to mind. Yeah, that to me that's his best album. <laughs> yeah, that one. Wait, which one but, of you guys oh, three? Wait, which one of you three have listened to Joe's actual debut album? Everything. I have. Yeah, I did. I have recently, probably. but when it came out, I was like, no. Mm-mm. And now what do you think? Well, you know. You wouldn't play it anymore? Oh, no, 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 no. I listened to it I one mean, time, and that was about it. it I love it I'm in Love, really... though. That's my jam for, for life. Yeah. He'd be singing, I mean, too. He can sing, but the songs, it's just like, what are you singing about? Just my opinion. <laughs> 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 I'm just wow. saying, just my opinion. Which brings and us, that's are we ready to move? There's a lot of artists who you listen to, like, what are you singing about? But oh, you know. boy. That actually brings us to our next topic. Are we ready to move to the next one, Kyle? Yeah, we are. Now, clearly from your YouTube comments, Lachelle, you're all about vocalists. Mm-hmm. Vocals, vocals, singing ability, yeah. taking them, taking it to church. You're you're all about that, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, Ed, I know you love Kelly Price, so you're probably in the same boat. Um, yes. But we're here. <laughs> wow. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. So I want to ask you guys, who are your top – Tom, are we going three or five? Top – We need five top, males and five females. Give me your top five male and top five female vocalists in R&B all time. Or maybe not it. two. I got no, not all, no. not all time. Not all time. Not all time? Current or – since 1990. Since 1990. Okay. They viewed in, in, in 1990 or later. Or just someone that's still relevant to, to the industry. Does it have to be, like, favorite to leave? Can it just be anybody just top top of the dome? or? Well, no. It, no it, I it's mean, hard it's, for me to do favorites. Like, do I like this one more than that one? It's hard. Okay, just give me five. No, so this isn't this isn't favorites. This is okay. Best things. The skill wise are the best vocalists. So for me, let me think. I'm gonna have to go with. Hmm. Dang, I can't do. You can't do Johnny Gill, right? Because he's new edition. No, you, you can, no, you can put, you can put so. Johnny. He you can put Johnny Gill. He's 1990 solo. Just asking. Yeah, no, 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 that's, that's a lie. He came out in '85 solo. No, I was gonna what, say what? he no. didn't. He actually had a one before. I know, that. I know, he chemistry. I know. I'm yeah. tripping. No, you can you can um, put Johnny okay. Gill in there. Johnny Gill. No, oh, he's in the '80s. I can do him. Oh uh, come on, he counts. People still know him. Wait, the point was if they debuted in 1990 or later. All right. Well, do. okay, okay. I'm right, gonna say. I'm gonna say Casey, and then. Dang, can't do Aaron Hall because he came out with Guy, so scratch him. Um, so Casey, Brian McKnight. No, no, Casey, Eric Benet, Brian McKnight. Two more. Hmm. I feel like we actually know. I feel like we actually knew her list, but I feel like we knew your list by just reading your comments on YouTube, believe it or not. Yeah. We know who you, we know who you hate. Wow, that um, was. A, what? Oh, I love Smokey Norfolk. Oh. Blow. Um, who else? Pleasure P? Displeasure P? Uh-uh. Heck no. no. Brother Kane He did you Y'all wrong. No. Y'all be... But anyway, um, let me see. <laughs> All right, I'm going to Honorable, I'm going to have to go a toss-up between the brother from um, Men Condition, Stokely. Yep. Okay. And then, oh, that's a good um, one. And then, what's his name from Silk? The little round head man? I always <laughs> forget little his name. G? His, yeah, him, him. I like the little round head man. <laughs> <laughs> That's his name. Um, honorable mention Dino from H Town. He be singing. Um, wow. 
I don't know. That's about it for me, I guess. I can't really think off the top right now. Ted, I want to hear yours. Doing this off the top is tough, Leia. Um I would have question, to say the question is is, is would Keith Sweat be in your top five? Babe. Keith would not be in my top five if we're talking vocalists. Vocal oh, okay. oh, I oh, am a oh, reviewer <laughs> player. I am unbiased. All right. So um I don't know, player Peak Usher was good at his peak. Um, I would have to mention Brad McKnight. Usher. I have to mention Joe. Usher. Okay. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Peak Usher, not uh, not um hard to love Usher. Who? <laughs> right. Wait a second. What so, we, um, hard to love Usher is actually the best Usher in terms of vocals. Boy, you gonna catch this dial uh, tone? Uh. <laughs> no, 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 I'm serious. He sounds better than ever. Now his music might not be good, but he sounds great. He sounds good. He didn't sound better than ever. <laughs> yeah, he wasn't. What is? Ah, mm. oh, I don't know. Because <laughs> he was blowing all over Confessions and on My Way. A little bit on My Way, but more so on Confessions to me. A little bit on My Way, but definitely by Confessions and um, Yeah, he was. In 8701, he was doing it. So, like, he's got some joints. But I put him there. Joe, Brian McKnight. I feel like I'm biting you to say Eric Benet, but he's if he's Come not on, top five, Eric, he's top ten. Eric he's Benet up there. He is like primo. Come on now. He's up there. Oh, no, never mind. I feel like I feel like we're missing somebody though. Yeah, you're yeah. missing someone. You're missing someone. Tank. Oh, oh boy. What you feel? You you feel that Why? silence? I hope you felt that silence in your soul. Tank is a beast, man. Are you kidding me? He is a beast. Of what? Of singing? I don't know. Yes. A vocal (laughs) beat. Vocal beat. Tank, I got you. Okay. Tank is a decent singer. I don't know about top five. See, decent is nice, but just to be on top and uh uh-uh, but yeah, okay. All right. Ready for my next one? Uh Uh-huh. Glenn Lewis? (gasps) Yeah. Ed? Mm. Hey, y'all like Glenn Lewis? He be singing? Oh my got goodness! Some hits to sing, Look, play it. Glenn oh my! Oh. Sing. Glenn's vocals are good, but his content is just so weepy. We're all talking the time. about. Oh, like, I know. Player. I feel you. I feel you. Yeah. We're talking about vocal talent here. No, we're, we're talking, talking about, about vocals. But when your vocals are always on the verge of crying, that messes up your contention on my list. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> this is ridiculous. This is slander. It's not I mean, fun. It's hard to choose, Tom, because you got to think like it's so many of them. I know. I'm just joking. That it's only picking five. It's like dang, but All right. primo for me, well, Eric Benet, hands down. Tom, I got something that will really, really set you off. So I was what? talking to Lachelle on the phone earlier, and she said Case and Donnell Jones are the same person. They are. They <laughs> absolutely are. Come on. <laughs> they are. They are. I was looking at some of the oh live stuff God. from a couple years ago. It's the same person. Do you know what that makes you sound like? What? Hater? Yes. I know. I know. Like, what is the justification of that statement? They just, they kind of do the same thing. What does that mean, though? Vocally, like, good, but not like Eric Benet. You know. <laughs> not Eric Benet. So, so they're not Eric, sorry, Eric so Benet. Sorry, Eric Benet is primo. That's my boy. I'm rocking with so, Eric. Hold on, hold on. Let me ask you a question. So then uh-huh. you must think Kyle's whole generation of artists is the same person. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's about 20 of them. Shall I name them, or you want to just keep it moving? No. Name them, Leia. Name them. Let's, I'm let's here. Name they them. are the same person. That's not Who? fair. Who? They are. Name them. Omarion well, is the same person as Avant. No, not, not, no, Avant, Tank, and Dwelly. Those are all through the same person, period. <laughs> So Wait, you, what? Well, <laughs> when you get to like race. Kyle's, like his, you know, those people, um, what's the boy? Oh, God, I can't even think of him. I can't call him. Help me, um, Kyle. Mario. Was, Mario. Jeremiah. Um, wow. Mario. Oh, Jeremiah. They're all the same person. This Pleasure Lloyd? P, same person. Well, uh, Pleasure P and Jeremiah might be the same person. I'll give you that one. See? 
They all do the I same thing. You no, know, can I can I give you the other side of the story here? Uh huh. And no offense, I love when people say no offense intended, but you sound like. You sound like one of those people who, when they get older, they think everything that comes out that's newer is trash. Yeah, I am. Oh, man. I yeah. <laughs> she says, yeah. Yep. Well, at least you admit to it, though. So we've, we've remember that boy, that. Um, Latif? Remember him? <laughs> yes, I You're remember not- Latif. <laughs> I was listening to Latif like a couple weeks ago. I know. Every single time I watch like a Jodeci video or somebody from that era, that boy's video is always on the right side of my screen. I'm like, let me just click it just to see what it's about. It's the same person as um, Lloyd and all them. It's the same person. Oh, mm-hmm. man. They all do that. That, that. that Michael Jackson, you know how he, that little side-to-side move that they do, the little arm. They wear the same clothes at the same time. It's all the same person. Why? <laughs> they all do the same. Oh, my God. I'm just saying. What a mess. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I don't even. I don't even know what right. to say at this point. Well, let's, let's a Michael it. Jackson gift with the popcorn right now. It's all good. <laughs> oh man! All right, let's let's keep this thing moving. Let's uh, let's <laughs> let's move this to a, a a happier time. So on our, on my Facebook, on our on our Facebook and our Instagram, I posted something called the R and B quiz. I don't yeah. know if you guys had a chance to see that. Uh, Lachelle, I don't. Lachelle, do you follow us on on Instagram and and Facebook? Uh, uh-uh, uh, just on the website, you know, YouTube. Okay, so you won't know all the answers. But Tom, did you have you had a chance to look at the uh, post? Yeah, I saw it. Okay, so there's 12 questions. Each person will get to answer one question. If you get the answer wrong, you're eliminated. You're eliminated from this game. Okay. Okay. Mhm. Are you ready? Yeah, player, I'm always ready. And Tom, you ready too? Wait, I saw the answers already, though. It's okay. Come on. Okay. It's okay. Yeah. You're going to know all the answers. <laughs> if you're an RV enthusiast, you should know all the answers. Well, that's true. Okay. All right, this is the first ever R&B quiz. Shout out to Darius Thomas for uh, providing us with all the answers on the Facebook page. You have six likes right now. I'm going to give you number seven. <laughs> so, Tom, we're going to start off with you. Number one, what time was Usher in his drop top cruising the streets? Oh, you know I don't listen to lyrics, but isn't it 7 o'clock? That is correct. <laughs> yes, yeah, Psalm does not listen to lyrics, in case you do. I don't. Absolutely All right. not. Ed, you ready? Yep. How can you unbreak Tony Braxton's heart? By saying you love her again. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Lachelle, if Shy ever falls in love again, what will he be sure of? Ooh. Oh. Well, wait, I know it. Oh. The lady will be a friend. That the lady's just like you. Yeah. So you're out. <laughs> wait, is it Shy? Shy is a group. Like that. Dude, yeah. Shy is a group. Oh, I don't know. I just. <laughs> wait, 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 think, wait, wait. You didn't know Shy was a group? No, I'm just reading whatever's on this thing right now. You said he, though. That's what the thing says. I didn't write the I didn't make the quiz up. Oh, man. Yeah, I think they're referring to whoever is singing that part. And, all right, Lachelle, I'll give you, I'll give you a chance. If you can name all the members of Shy, you're back in the game. Oh, Lord. Oh, hey, I don't know. Them, I don't I know. Garfield Bright, because we got married when I was little. And that's, that's all I know. I don't know. You're going to have to fight my wife for Garfield because apparently it was going down in the 90s for their face in Garfield. <laughs> I don't know any of those. Mm-mm. All right, then. Do you know them? No. See? <laughs> I'm so, trying to give you a side note. Side note here. What kind of a name is Garfield? I mean, come on. Isn't that a cat? Oh. It's also I a like president, you unpatriotic jerk. Ooh. Yes, in the 1800s, but who still named someone Garfield? <laughs> you have a point. <laughs> I'm just saying. He's at the 1800s. <laughs> Wait, what's that? I don't know. All right. All right, guys, you guys ready uh, for more R&B quiz? So we're down to Ed and Tom. Mm-hmm. Ed's going to win. So Tom, so, Tom, how much was Erica Badu born underwater with? <sighs> yeah, 
I can't say I listen to Erica, but Erica Badu like that, so pass. <laughs> oh, my friend. gosh. Must Ed, I for the way y'all every three? Yes, $3 for, I think I know the and answer. six dimes, homie. <laughs> and Edwin's. Should we continue? No, do the females. <laughs> okay. Well, Michelle, I'll just give you one for redeeming purposes, and then we'll move on from this. Okay. Why can't R.L. and Deborah, Deborah Cox be friends? I have no idea. I don't even know that song like that. What? Oh, my God. I know it, but I don't know it, know it. Because he's, cause cause he's still in love with her. Yeah. Don't you say a thing about R.L. now. I like R.L., but it's... Okay, good. All right, thank you. Moving on. Mm. All right, now we're gonna go. Now we're gonna go back to the uh, the, uh, the 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 top five female vocalists. Ed, oh, put a brother on a spot. Oh, Kelly Price, we- Faith Evans, Tamia. Uh, y'all help me out. I'm forgetting somebody. What about Joe Brandy? Brandy. I got Brandy. I, no. You're not um, going to put the vocal Bible in there? <laughs> You're not going to put Moesha in there? That's my big sister, but let me shut up. <laughs> oh, man. Monica? Mm. <laughs> Mm, no, like these are top ten. I don't know about top five. I got a good one. Let's. Who? You want me to go? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Kelly Price, Faith Evans, Lettucey, Kiki yeah. Wyatt, live, yeah. not on record, only live. And then number five, I have no idea. Kiki's a great one. Yeah, she's top five. Live, live, not on record. She's fine then, on record. You don't know them records. And then I'm going to have to just... <laughs> I'm going to have to go default and just say Mariah Carey. I can't say Whitney because she came out in the 80s, so I'm just going to say Mariah. Oh, yeah, Mariah. She's the best. On record. On record. Not live. <laughs> not live. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm just saying. Funny. No, I'm with you on that one. But give <laughs> Kiki props on record. I ain't yeah. Kiki cool. Now, what Kiki... Okay. okay. That pretty much nails it. I'd say. Yep. Where's the Shanti on this list? A uh, who? About number four hundred thirty seven. Oh my goodness. Hey, that girl can't Not that bad. <laughs> you got it. She has some great songs though and a lot great of great songs, but Oh yeah, she had great limited songs. vocal capabilities. I could have sung uh, all baby and it would have been all right. What about who? Beyonce? Oof. No. <laughs> oh my god. No, no, what? I like I like her her technique. But I hate her tone. Her tone just drives me crazy. She just gets there and starts screaming and hooping and hollering. And I can't take it. Well, she's gotten, and I used that used to bother me greatly, but she has gotten a lot better, I'd say, in recent years, like her last two albums. She cut out on all those histrionics because she was doing the most on them earlier albums. If you listen to she's Listen, like the ending better. of Listen, ending of Love on Top, yes. that's what I'm yes, talking about. Yes, that Love on Top, it. that's what I'm talking Ugh, about. Please, that four album thing. is when she kind of lost it, but... The Beehive is busy with fighting Kanye, so I can talk today. We can <laughs> slander a little bit. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, man. I like her. I like her first album. She's, she's cool, but I'm just, I like other singers in place of her, period. So, Kyle, um, you had a new feature you wanted to introduce, didn't you? Oh, we already did it. We already did it. It was the R&B quiz. Oh, man. Oh. So we have to talk about We have to talk about the food discussion, then. Yeah, we do have to talk about the food discussion. Can I, can I um, tell you guys one of my favorite foods that's are only around during the holidays? Wait, wait, not not Tom, if you come up here talking about some mayonnaise sandwich that you not ate, what? Ugh. Oh, it's it's light eggnog, guys. Only the light one. I will not drink the regular kind. Um, it I'm like hot or cold on eggnog. Some of it is good, but some of it is too thick and gross. <laughs> Lachelle? Mm-mm, I don't drink anything but water. That's my word. Really? For real, for real. Oh, yeah. really? Wow. wow. You have a new friend. Right. No lie. No lie. <laughs> That's awesome. I quit Water hang out. in the 90s. I quit drinking, like, fruit juice, fruit punch, all that stuff. That's year amazing. Ago. So from, wow. like, November 
of last year to now, I drink is water, period. I am impressed, about, and I need to what, get my life right. What about chicken? Nah, I'm good on chicken. What? Oh, what man, do you eat? We're not friends anymore. I might do like Popeyes, a little strips here and there, but uh-uh, I don't really eat chicken too much. I like fish. I like salmon. I like sushi. You know, this all sounds very healthy. I'm trying to be. Well, Tom, Tom, she is the first female guest on our podcast ever. You know. Yeah, that's true. We usually talk about junk food and fried chicken and like the worst things. I like eat. a little, you know, but as of lately, I'm just. You know, doing something different. I eat a lot of fruit. Like, I love my little pineapples and oranges, you know, stuff like that. Hmm. I could eat a whole Hmm. fruit bowl and just be content. Wow, that's so boring. (laughs) (laughs) I never thought Tom would say that's so boring. It's fun when I'm the one who's saying they like the healthy stuff, (laughs) not when other people are saying it. (laughs) Now I'm hating. So now this is just um, just hate. Now I'm hating. Yep. <laughs> um, there is one artist, guys, that I want to talk about before we get out of here. Uh, Robin Thicke put out a new uh, uh, new single with Ed's favorite rapper, Juicy J. Oh, boy. My question is, why does the label insist on pushing him to pop when in the past he's been selling as an R&B artist? Why do they keep doing that? You know why they're doing it, unless you just woke up from 1992 into 2016. <laughs> R&B ain't here for the cash registers anymore. Like, yep. it's, yeah, but pop is the only way to do it. Even though he could make perfectly fine R&B records, they won't let. Yeah. But even like when R. R&B... Yes, go ahead. Yeah. Well, I mean, I was gonna say even when even when uh Robin Thicke, I mean, even when R&B wasn't selling, like even just a couple of years ago, he was still doing all right numbers. Well, yeah, he, he was. I mean, no. I think I, I think what happened with Mary's latest single, uh, "Think of It," showed you she reached the number one spot on radio. I think it was the fastest in twenty years. It just show, goes to show you how little, not only competition there is, but how little is even invested into that side of radio, and because it doesn't do. Right. Right. I agree, no competition. But I think that's that. That's why, because let's be honest, it's not one of her best songs ever. I think she's had a ton of better songs, but I think that's why they're still going to push people to that hip hop lane because that's where the real competition is and where the sales are right now. That broccoli song has is two times platinum. Think about that. So if you could, <sighs> don't you, you could have a think about that. But think about okay. it. If you could have a hit single on hip hop, you're going to go. You're going to sell millions of copies. A, a hit song on adult R and B radio. Who knows? Maybe you're probably not going to go gold. So that's just, yeah, that's I just my perspective. Mm. Plus, how old is Robin Thick? Mm. I want to say sir, forty. I thought he's forty. He's 40? I didn't think he was that old. Wait, let is me pull up like the Wikipedia. No. Yeah, it was kind he's of. 39. He's thirty-nine. Oh, he's thirty-nine. He hasn't reached the magic number yet. Nope. He can still turn up for another year. What's the age? That, do you think that? Let me ask you guys. What's the age you're too old to be going against hip hop artists for an R&B 40. singer? Forty is the magic number. Well, I wouldn't think so because for his, uh, his, for his credit, Kells is still hanging in there, and he's probably true, mid-40s true, by now. True, So it just depends on the content. Yeah, but the problem and with the person, him is he's the, and the person he's, too. A, he's the butt of a lot of jokes, but he doesn't seem to care. Like, people make fun of him for dressing like he does and hanging out with, you know, younger people and all that, but he's, he's still, still selling still. out. I mean, at the end of the day, as long as he's still getting those numbers and the cash register is ringing, Mike, he'll laugh to the bank. I quit buying his albums after um, the the R album, the 95 one. That's when I clocked wow. out. Wow. Oh, I just wasn't man, really feeling clock out quick. Yeah, I wasn't really feeling them vocally. It's cool, but it's just like, eh, I prefer the other ones. Mm-hmm. Um, on to some more news right now. Um, Monica is no longer with RCA Records. Not sure what she's doing now, whether she's going to go indie or join Epic, which, you know, it seems like every veteran R&B artist is joining Epic. Um, What do you guys see for Monica moving forward? I love her. That's my big sister, but if you go independent, it's over. That's just my thought. What do you mean by over? It just seems like everybody that goes independent, they end up just lost, forgotten, and overlooked, every single one of them. Yeah, but the thing is, they, they can't get no airplay. Tour. 
they they just they can't tour, do nothing. Though. They huh? tour, and that's where the real money. They get, they go, they do tons of shows, but that's where the real money is. Album sales isn't much making money for anyone anymore. You know that. Yeah. I don't so, think Monica's. Still packed, I know. No exposure. How you, you, mean you get no exposure? No radio. Oh, time, from no the nothing. hits. Off the hits, people still want to. People still want to hear those hits. They always will, you know. Like Boys to Men still like tours religiously. They haven't had a hit in how long? Over twenty. No, I was playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> Does anyone even know they had an album that came out two years ago? I doubt it, but they're still touring. I knew it because they came up on my, um, what was, I was watching some video, and then I saw the little commercial. I'm like, let me check it out. Hated it. It was alternative. Couldn't stand it. Yeah. Why yeah, wasn't blowing like you used, used to do? Don't forget no. in Europe, they, they they treat these artists like gods. Like here in the U.S., we take them for granted, but like mm -hmm. these people could tour for the rest of their lives, and they'll be straight. Like even if they never released another album, Monica... If she decides, well, to, I know she has a family. I, you know. No, I, I will say this though. Like, I sort of agree with what Lachelle is saying in terms of it being over. Because Monica has never been the type of person to go on tour and hit the road, and you know, just, she's a family, so she doesn't have to do all that grind work. So, in a sense, it's going to be over for I think Monica, the Monica that we know as the superstar R and B artist. That's my personal opinion. Yeah. Well. I'm trying to think of an example. And does like, she really like tour? She but does she really even tour, though? No, she, she doesn't. But maybe See? she doesn't need to. Maybe she's set money-wise, and she... I mean, it's not like she's going to be hurting for money. Unless she can't keep up her lifestyle. I have no idea. We don't know her situation, but... The yeah. thing is, I think Monica's going to always be a celebrity, either way. So she'll remain... Ed, I want to hear your opinion. You'd be quiet. I'm just letting y'all run with it, but I kind of agree with you. I think that Monica is, she's continued to put out good stuff, and when you look at artists that are kind of veterans, you kind of forget that Monica is a veteran. Like, she's been doing this since, like, 95, 96. Mm -hmm. So she can tour just off of the, the bank of her hits. I think that at this point now, it's just having the freedom to make the kind of music she wants to make. And as you saw of her last album, she is really on the cause of bringing back the classic R&B. That was the whole theme of her last album. So if that means going indie to do it, then so be it. I'm just here for the hot album. So I don't care if she's selling them out the back of a tracer. If the joint is hot, I'm here for it. You think that album brought back R&B a little bit? I don't know if it brought back R&B, but the intent was there. Oh, okay. It was a nice trap <laughs> album, but I just didn't I didn't like it too much. It was a nice trap album? Uh-huh. What? No, it was not. It was no, not. It, was a, it wasn't a trap album at all. But the point is, like, it was, the roots of it were straight up R&B, and that's what she was going for. So it was cool. I'm thinking it made my top ten. You know that ain't R&B. Come on now. R&B? That was R&B? Yeah, but to hear, I don't think you're willing to accept oh, progression in music. The genre has progressed. I mean, it wasn't trap beats. Let's let's be honest. There no, was still vocal Hard to there. Love was trappy. That was trappy. Mm. Cold Red was fine. I didn't like it. Fair enough. What, <laughs> what are some albums you liked this year and last year? Out of curiosity. I don't. Even, I can't even call it. Um, um <laughs> I, well, there I can't. We go. Let me think. What did I like? Um, I don't know. Nothing really. Johnny Gill was 2014, so you can't say that one. <laughs> oh, no, I didn't like that album at all. He held oh, back my vocally. Stunning turn of events right there. Yeah. I didn't like hey. it. He held back. And I don't, I don't even really remember on it. that album. Tank, huh? Sex, Love, and Pain 2? I like that song because it was Jodeci S. Good song. But the album Great was song. awful. I hated that. It was trappy. Yeah, that album. And I'm still oh, trying to figure out business. what is the big deal about that man. I don't get it. And I've been listening to his albums, trying to get into it, and I'm just like, I give up. Hell. I'm what through. about, uh, that's another story for another podcast. We've just... I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, how about uh, Keith Sweat, uh, whatever he called that last no, album? No, 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 no. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. Really we were cool. He, he, we were he used to make good. really good songs. They were fun and catchy, but as of late, Ain't nobody listening to them songs. I know I'm oh. not. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm not sorry. I, I, I said this note, 
ladies and gentlemen. Okay, let's shut it. Let's let's wrap it up, Kyle. <laughs> let's wrap Why? it up. <laughs> I'm just saying. Ed's gonna have a heart attack. I'm just no. He can have. A, Ed, are you listening <laughs> to um, Keep Plus new album? Forever. Yes, ma'am, I am. It is up in the ride. Yes, I am. Is it that? That and okay. Maxwell. Ma- who? Okay. Okay. Oh, man. Oh, I man. feel All like right, well, the way Maxwell, he was sounding kind of, his falsetto don't sound, it sounds like Yanni, and it, it just don't sound right no more. But I heard he yeah. had an accident, so I guess that's a pass. What? I just didn't like a it. What? That's what I heard. He Somebody <laughs> That's what somebody told me when I commented on one of his videos. They were like, "He, the reason why he don't sound like that is because his, he has some kind of accident, vocals. I'm like, I don't know. So what but what I know is that I love him. I don't like the new what album. What are y'all talking about? Maxwell. Uh, no, idea. no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... Hold on. Can we just sum this up before we go? Would you okay. say that, could, Lachelle, could you fairly say that mm-hmm. R&B died in the late 90s and anything that's come out after that has been pretty much garbage? Yep. Wow, and that that wraps it up, <laughs> <laughs> ladies and ladies and gentlemen. RB is dead since the late nineties. Uh, Lachelle, I want to thank you for uh, joining us on this podcast. We've been actually wanting you on this podcast Aww, for so the fun. longest time. We were kind of nervous in the beginning, and we have every right to do so. But you did good. <laughs> well, I know because everybody's perfect, so you got to make sure everything is perfect and tell these artists that they're perfect. Because if not, then you're a hater. I get it. I know. For sure. Now we, we um, also we also appreciate the uh, comments and always checking out everything we do. We that means a lot to uh, us and your constant support. Absolutely. Uh, Ed, um, so in stereo dot com. I mean, realistically, I you, y'all have the best website. It's cohesive. It's nice and clean. Some of the artists, I'm like, dang, is this really? Are you singing? <laughs> but you know, hey, it's new day and age, and do what you got to do. Mhm. <laughs> Ed, <laughs> Ed, so in stereo dot com. What's going on? If you haven't already, make sure you check out the site. Go check out that Bruno Mars review. We got that up. I got the review of Joe up. If you mixed that, and this coming week, I think it's going to be kind of popping this week because we got um, a retrospective on. See, Lachelle's going to she's going to feel me on this. Chucky Booker. We're going to look back at Chucky <gasps> Booker's career this week. We who? are also going to who? look at Manic Wait, who? Oh. Wait, who? Chucky <laughs> Booker. Booker C? I, you know I got Booker so C. to know who Chucky Booker is. He actually sounds awful live, though. That's that's just for real, for real. Like, I've heard seen him live. I'm like, oof. I've but never I, seen I don't him like live. the albums completely either. I like the f- couple songs on the first one. I like games on the second one. And that's all I know. No, this second album was fire. The first album was kind of eh. There's not even a, a Wikipedia page for Chucky Booker, just so you okay. know. There is a Wikipedia page. You got to hear games, though. That's, that's, the, <laughs> you, that's the one. I'm going to need you to have to know who what games is. Because that Chucky is a Brown? heavily sampled song. We got Chucky Brown. Chucky Brown. We got Chucky Brown. We got Chucky from Child's Play. That's all okay. <laughs> Chucky from Rugrats. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry guys. Okay. Uh Tom, what's going on with you know I got so? Well, you decided to put out our uh interview piece that we we filmed of ourselves. You know, we're not big on uh putting ourselves out there like that. It's all about the music and the artists for us, but if you guys want to check that out here about the history of the site, you can watch that on YouTube. Um we had Tony Sunshine at Soul Village last week, interviewed him. We interviewed Salam Remy, producer, loved his work. So that'll be coming out this week too. Anything you got? Shout out to him. Yeah. No, that means. So I'm Remy. Okay, because. Oh my goodness. I like him. Don't do it. Oh. Who are you talking about? Wait, who are you talking about, Michelle? No one. No one. You said two okay. people, and I said yeah. I like the second one you said. Okay. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, okay, so that's it for this podcast. I want to say one thing. Before we get out of here, which means, Lachelle, you might be invited back to our next one, our next podcast, or you might not, but Lachelle Wallace said in the YouTube comment that she didn't like the Playa album, the Cheer See You album. Yeah. I saw that comment, and I, after I, like, resuscitated myself after falling out of my chair. Ed, you know you only like it because of Missy and them. That's why you like it. 
Come on. She knows me vocally, pretty well, y'all. Vocally, <laughs> vocally. Come on now, vocally. I'm, I'm impressed you Voc- know me. No, vocally they good. They're good vocally. Who? Who? Smokey. Smokey oh, okay. is good vocally. And Black is okay. really good vocally. Yep, they are perfect and can do no wrong. I got it. They're no Smokey. Say vocally. all that. <laughs> That's all I have to say. Smokey and Play is better than Smokey Robinson, okay? But anyways... <laughs> That's a conversation for another. He beats Smokey Norfolk. I know that. Much. <laughs> All right. Does he have a Wikipedia page? Smokey Norfolk. Yeah. Smokey Norfolk has like should. a number one song. Come on now. I I, I hope As so. As Chucky Booker had two number one songs. I need y'all to read Soul and Stereo on Tuesday. He had number right ones. Right. What, what was his number ones? Who's um Chucky? Chucky Booker. Games. Oh, my brother came yep. thing, and you know it. He's just, he's cool. All right, guys, we're going to call it a day. Uh, thank you, Lachelle, for joining us on this podcast. We'd love to have you You're back welcome. some more so we can talk more R&B. Uh, but until then, Tom, Ed, Kyle, we're out. 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 Ed, Kyle, we're out.